Hi, this is uh, the shorter version of iBook Bindings podcast, uh, The Bookish Talk. Uh, I'm Stepan, and uh, that's my co host, Pavel. Hi, Pavel. Hi there. Hi. Uh, today, Pavel will show us uh, some photos uh, from his visit to uh, the Museum of uh, uh, Pre Soviet Underground uh, Communist uh, Typography. Okay, uh, now let me start this. So, I should probably start by saying why I chose this particular place. Uh, one of the uh, running uh, themes uh, in all our talks is how small everyone's working place is. Uh, some, of, uh, some of those are neater, some of the, those, like yours, are somewhat less, less so, but absolutely everyone says how little place they have and how efficiently uh, they try to use it. So I remembered one of the best and uh, perhaps the weirdest of Moscow's book-related museums. It's uh, a communist underground printing press, active during 1905-1906, so some quite wild times. Uh, yeah, during, had... during the first, uh, first revolt. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was the first Russian Revolution, not too successful, but still uh, rather uh, rather uh, violent, and communists uh, had a significant role in it. But first, let me uh, set uh, the, the scene for you. Imagine you are in the center of Moscow, well, maybe a couple of miles from the Kremlin, and uh, uh, there is a castle, an 18th century castle, built by uh, Catherine the Great's uh, favorite architect, that tens of thousands of people pass by every day, and yet hardly anyone sees it. Do you know where, where it is and what it is? Well, uh, is it Butyrka? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's known as Butyrska Castle. It's the uh, infamous 18th century and still very much active prison in the center of Moscow. Here's a couple of photos. So you, as you can see, it's a bit dilapidated yeah. and rather grim and well guarded. Uh, lu uh, luck uh, luckily from, uh, for us Moscovites, uh, nowadays it's hidden be uh, behind a Soviet era, uh, St uh, Stalin's era residential block, so nobody yeah. sees it. I... With, a, with, a great, with a great view to there, uh, to inside of the quarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> imagine that, living in a very, very expensive flat and having that. In front yeah, of you. my stepmother's uh, uh, parents had an apartment in, in this building, so their apartment had uh, views to the outside, but some of the apartments have views to to the inside. And uh, yeah, it's very tricky because sometimes uh, uh, the the prison uh, administration will uh, tell people uh, we don't want to see you near the windows today <laughs> because there's <laughs> something happening in prison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, nowadays it's hidden, anyways. It was the first time I saw it, uh, the day I went to visit this museum. Uh, but uh, a century ago, it was uh, in front of the street, so cars passed by, lots of people going by. But most importantly, it has always been very well guarded. There were yep. lots of policemen, lots of uh, military people. So, as you can imagine, if you want to set up a communist printing press uh, 200 meters from, uh, from this prison, you'd better hide it real well, which they did. Uh, uh, nowadays, it's still very, very well, well preserved. Uh, it's a uh, late 19th century uh, brick building, not far, not far from the prison, not far from, the, uh, from uh, barracks, uh, not far from uh, a depot, a bus depot, um, yet again, very well guarded. Uh, and and, and uh, his, historic. As yes, well. yes, yes. And so it's, uh, it looked like this. It looks like a shop. Uh, actually, the sign uh, at top of it says, uh, fruits from the Caucasus, wholesale trade. Yeah. 
set up by a uh, certain Kalanadze, who was a, a, a Georgian uh, uh, merchant, uh, but mostly communist. I have, to say, <laughs> I have to tell you in advance, there is a great story. Being communist, they were awful at trading. I mean, imagine that. You are in the center of Moscow and you're selling fruit. And you need money to print uh, your, uh, your papers, your communist yeah. papers, right? So it would certainly make sense to make certain money of yeah. what you do anyway. Some, some profits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but not communists. How could they? Uh, when uh, somebody uh, uh, eventually came to, uh, to buy a really big and lucrative order, uh, they had to go to a nearby market and buy the fruit at double the price they were selling it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so not, not much of a business, but a very, very successful operation. They lasted for over a year. They never got caught. And uh, in, uh, uh, in the meantime, they uh, had printed hundreds of thousands of copies of their party newspaper. So here we go. Uh, let, uh, let's go inside and see what, uh, what's inside. As you can see, it was in July and it was already the pandemic in full swing, uh, but the museums had just opened. Uh, it was like the, the second day it happened in Moscow and yeah. they only accepted uh, 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 visitors one or two at a time. Not that I, I think that many more visitors come to this particular <laughs> museum. <laughs> I personally have known about it for decades and it's my first time. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so it looked like uh, a, a, ver a very usual shop. You can see a set of uh, uh, living quarters behind it. I'll show, I'll show them a bit later. But if you go behind the counter, you, uh, you see this you see stairs going underneath. But this is not the hidden part. It was absolutely normal for, for a shop to have a cellar to keep the, uh, 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 their fruit in. So it was totally okay. Yep. So uh, before we go downstairs and see what's, uh, what's there, I should, uh, I should probably show you the scheme, uh, the plan, because it's a bit, a bit, a bit difficult to explain otherwise. So here we are. We enter from this side. Yep. This is the entrance. This is uh, the counter. So here's, uh, uh, here's, here are the stairs. Yeah. So we uh, underneath, there is a big cellar. As usual, yeah. As usual, which is absolutely normal. And there is also a well. Uh, this is a rather wet uh, part of Moscow, and so it has always been. And they got an official permission to dig a well so that they know the level of underground waters. Yeah. So this was totally official. But what they did next was certainly not. A meter or so below ground, they dug a tunnel wide enough only to... Uh, for uh, for a grown man uh, to uh, climb through, you could. Uh, it's about thirty or forty centimeters tall. So you climbed for uh, for a couple of meters, and there uh, there was a secret room. Here it is. Uh, two me uh, a meter and a half squared, and about two uh, two meters tall. Nowadays, uh, so at are, least at least you can stand there. Almost. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that was all you could do. Uh, so you could stand there, yeah. Nowadays, there is a window right here. Obviously, yeah. they can't, they can't let, let visitors climb through a tunnel, so, um, so they made a small window so that you can see what was there. But bear in mind, the only way to get there was by going through this secret tunnel uh, on the bottom of the well. Well, it should have been fun to, to, to you know, to crouch there, <laughs> if yeah. they allowed it. <laughs> uh, and and uh, note that living quarters are right at top of it. So, yep. so, uh, so underground printing press and living quarters above. 
So uh, here's what you see when you uh, come down. In the uh, uh, times past, it wouldn't look like this. Even 10 years ago, this is a new reconstruction, uh, more tourist friendly. 10 years ago, it looked like it used to. It was full of boxes of fruit. And in these boxes, uh, they used to hide uh, their produce, uh, by which I mean not lemons, but uh, newspapers. <laughs> Uh, nowadays, there is uh, this table, and you can see uh, examples of what they actually uh, printed there. I really like this stuff, actually. Worker, the worker's newspaper. Uh, uh, I like the fonts too. Very, <laughs> very stylish. I don't, I, I don't know how revolutionary it is. I wouldn't associate it necessarily with communists. It looks more at nouveau to me i don't know but still rather nice what 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 about this so could you perhaps uh, uh translate it for me uh yeah <laughs> not, a, not an easy one <laughs> too, too many words uh <laughs> moscow's soviet uh, soviet is council of uh, workers deputies uh, committee and the group of the russians Social Democratic uh, Workers Party and Committee of the Party of uh, Revolutionary Socialists uh, decided, starting with uh, Wednesday 7th of December at noon, to declare in Moscow a total uh, political strike and to make it happen so that it turns into a military revolt. That, that's <laughs> a pretty rough. Sounds it's like also, a plan. <laughs> yes, it's also sounds like a plan. Yeah, uh, but it's written in this very uh, um, bureaucratic language. Thief bureaucraties. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and, yeah. The language. And, the language they they continue to use even today. That's even, yes, even that's, into our times. And that's yeah. tradition that it, uh, it seems it would never die. And I hate this language with with all fibers of my soul. <laughs> But, but now the decoration, I mean, they are, yeah. talking, they are talking about a workers' strike yeah. turning into a military uprising, yeah. dense bureaucracies, and yet they have grapes and flowers and yeah. a liar. I, yeah. mean, I mean, this because, is very, well, this because, is very because, because that's how it's done. <laughs> You're the doing, you are making a proper newspaper, not some, you know... Uh, they 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 knew their business. So anyway, I wanted to show you this, uh, but but on we go. Here is the well, and you can see the start of the tunnel go, uh, uh, go, uh, going through. And if you go to that window I, I mentioned, this is what you see. It's a, it's a small room. It's a really really small room. It's a meter and a half square, tops. No, yeah. more, no more than that. They used to, uh, to work in pairs there. And uh, uh, about two, uh, two hours at a time, because any longer than that, and uh, you couldn't breathe. Yeah. Because, uh, well, ob uh, well, obviously, two men in a very, in a very small room. And you obviously, you couldn't have any ventilations. Actually, lucky for them, uh, on the street nearby uh, ran uh, one of the first uh, Moscow trams. trams. Yeah. Uh, not uh, uh, steam powered, not anything horse powered, but yeah. still, but uh, but uh, but still a tram, with, uh, and it was noisy outside, so no, nobody could uh, nobody could hear it. Yeah. But um, I'm I'm impressed how how they were even able to take this wheel of the printing press inside because all other pieces are rather small and uh, you can take it apart but the wheel is <laughs> it's huge. It has been a couple of days since we recorded this video and uh, we've got some comments on uh, this press in the museum and the museum itself and uh, the real stuff that uh, was used there to print this uh, newspaper. Uh, watch until the end of the video to get more details uh, from one of our future podcast guests. And now let's return to our original video.
Actually, actually uh, nobody in the museum could tell me how they got it inside. They told <laughs> me that uh, the printing press itself obviously wasn't bought on, an, uh, on the open market. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was brought from the US uh, also, uh, also by re uh, by uh, revolutionaries, by uh, American communists, and somehow smuggled into Moscow and inst installed in here. And when the t uh, the this printing press closed, they took the machine with them to the next place, and then to the next one, and then to the next one. This is not the original, but yeah. it's the same uh, the same model. That one served them for over a decade. Before they, yeah. they uh, before they eventually won, actually. And do you but know what was the model of the press? People in the museum they used some jargon. They told it. Uh, they called it the Philadelphia model. Yeah. What What does that mean? There is also a bigger one upstairs. I, I'll show it uh, to you a bit later. I Maybe couldn't... somebody among our viewers will be able to help and to tell us what's Philadelphia model. But then. It may be some sort of Russian jargon, and uh, it may be not the same in, in the U.S. Yeah, and, and uh, I couldn't find any identifying signs, so I don't think maybe some, some really good specialist can tell what it is, but to me it looks like a generic printing press of the euro. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are specialists who can just look at this photo and uh, tell you what well, the model of the press is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, th th this is this is it. So when you That's say it. that, Cut. Uh, <laughs> uh, so when you say that your place is too small, <laughs> keep in mind that place this big was crucial to a revolution. The consequences of which we still feel to this day. Yeah. So this uh, this is this part. What are, uh, and a couple, a couple more details. Oh, there was a convenience there. There was a, a small niche where you could uh, keep your, what, uh, your instrument. So I think this is, uh, I, I, I forget what it's called. It's uh, the instrument you use to uh, uh, fill the printing form with letters. Or uh, maybe not. Gelly, gelly, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, gelly. yeah. It's, here, here's a somewhat bigger detail. Maybe this will help our unknown specialist. So while this was happening downstairs, there's a bit of, of an afterword to what I've just said. Above, an absolutely normal life went on. A, uh, a couple of jo uh, Georgian merchants, well, a merchant and his, and his wife, yeah, lived a, there. A merchant. Well, yes, a merchant <laughs> lived there. So, as you can see, there was a carpet, there was a drinking horn, there was a bed, a sewing machine, an icon. They even had a child while revolutionary newspapers were being printed uh, beneath them. Not, we, yeah, we, need, we have to call child services because, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a not a very safe, safe environment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, they, were, uh, they were not alone. Uh, of course, it would it would have been suspicious if sort of wealthy wealthy-ish couple were living by themselves. Yeah. So, communist party dispatched a uh, 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 live-in uh, uh, servant. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, she worked and lived in uh, in this kitchen. Uh, perhaps for our non-Russian uh, viewers, it will be a surprise that you can sleep on top of oven. On the oven, here it is. You you can you can see uh, where yeah. the oven is and where where she slept. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't stand pretending to be a servant. She was she was a communist. She was called uh, true, true communist. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. She, uh, she was uh, her party nickname was Horn because her voice was like that of a brass instrument. You could hear her from a mile away. Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, things uh, she uh, she had to do was to use this instrument. And not to ring linen, which is yeah. its uh, official uh, uh, function, but to see uh, a signal to the printing press that uh, so someone has come inside. Uh, the, yeah. This box was standing right atop the printing press, so they stopped it whenever she she did this this strange movement. Mm -hmm. 
And they had uh, what to be worried about too. The risk was enormous. In the same museum, there's also, also a small section devoted to what life uh, in Siberia for political prisoners was like. Yep. What awaited them were very, very heavy doors and very, very tough conditions, like this straight jacket or the very literal shack shackles. On yep. the right, this photo really, really impressed me. This is a heap of shackles that communists collected after uh, freeing political prisoners from, uh, from one of the, uh, the other Moscow's uh, prisons. One of, one, of the, one of the prisons, yeah. That's only yeah. one of the prisons. Uh, we have enough prisons still for, yeah. for our political prisoners. A good, a, a good long-standing tradition of prisons in Russia, yeah. That's true. We don't have shackles, but otherwise nothing much, much has changed. But it was all right for these particular revolutionaries. They uh, managed to avoid uh, capture for years and years and years. And even after that, they managed to survive uh, the revolution, to survive the civil war, to survive the beginning of Stalin's rule. And until... then... <laughs> and then they started reminiscing about the revolutionary glo uh, glory. And in late 20s, I think, maybe early 30s, they remembered about this small place in Moscow that they used to hide their printing presses in. Uh, they came there and they found uh, that hole, they found the tunnel, they found the room, and they found it... Uh, 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 one of the first Soviet um, museums, and it has been going strong since then. It uh, didn't even close during the Second World War, and it, uh, the first time it closed was during this pandemic, this spring, was the first time this museum closed since the uh, 1920s. And it's a good museum, and if you ever visit Moscow, I highly recommend it. That's an interesting experience. It, it, it was a really strange and really interesting experience, especially first going to the prison and, and seeing what that's like. And then it was much easier to imagine what it was like hiding under, underground and printing those thousands of uh, pages of newspapers. It's much harder to, to get the feeling when you see only the photos, uh, even much harder compared to your experience when you were quite close to this room. But uh, I think one can imagine how, can try to imagine how, how claustrophobic it should have been there. It should be pretty chilly there after, in the morning after the night because it's in the cellar. Then two two persons go there, and it's uh, pretty pretty fast. It, it becomes hot and uh, uh, yeah, and hard to breathe. <laughs> so it's, it's all it's almost the definition of hellhole. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's it from me for today. Okay, thank you, Pavel. That that was an interesting story and interesting experience. And here are some more details on the press uh, that uh, is currently in the museum and the press that uh, was really used uh, by the underground uh, typography from our future guest, uh, a hobbyist printer from California, Ivan Gulkov. They have a problem with their press. It's assembled wrong. It would never print the way it's assembled. <laughs> okay, I guess we needed to ask you about this press because we don't know anything about it. We, we could understand that it was a uh, really small room where, where the press was uh, located uh, and it was uh, pre pretty hard to work there, but we knew nothing about the press. They had it assembled wrong. Looks like crap. <laughs> Could never print. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. This is fun. And do, do well, you know which press they had uh, in 1905? Well, the, well, the one they have there right now is a Liberty, which would never fit in, uh, in that space anyways. Mm -hmm. So uh, they had something that was basically more along, along the lines of this kind of press, only a little bigger. 
um, which in, in Russia at the time was known as Bastonka. That, that's, that's what they told me. But we discussed uh, with Stepan how did they get that big wheel inside that small tunnel. So they clearly yes, didn't. They did. So uh, they used something like what you use. But I saw the newspapers they printed and they were yes. regular size. They weren't like uh, a quarter. Well, or... the, 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 um, when I say something like this, I mean the size. I mean bigger, uh, probably way bigger, but Nothing, nothing as large as they have it or there right now mm -hmm. at the moment because that would never work, which is why they had it assembled incorrectly. Because the original, uh, from what I remember, uh, the original press that they had was confiscated by the police and um, it basically rusted away. Oh, this, this is great. Uh, you won't believe it. Just two days ago, we recorded this, uh, uh, this talk of ours and we were discussing could we possibly find somebody who knows what the model is? <laughs> and here you are. It's Thank called, you so it's, much. It's, uh, it's called the Liberty. Uh, the, the model they have right now is called the Liberty Press. It's probably one of the most beautiful presses, uh, most gracious and, uh, in terms of its movement. It's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a dance when that thing moves. So uh, that's it for today. As usual, many thanks to all the viewers of our podcast and a special thanks to our supporters on Patreon. Their help is crucial to us because all the money coming from our patrons are covering the editing of these videos of all of our podcasts. So many thanks to our patrons. If you would like to join the crowd, pledges start with only $1 or one euro per month. And uh, for higher pledges, uh, you will get uh, some special things like uh, digitized uh, old books about uh, uh, book arts, book binding, printing, etc. See you next time. See ya.